<laughs> Felix here. Happy Friday to you. And it is shopping Friday. Well, not quite, but it is retail sales data um, Friday. And also, I want to guide you through what actually happened yesterday, uh, why the market reacted the way it did. We're going to go through that in just a minute here. But we've got retail sales data coming in here as we speak. Of course, none of the following financial advice. You know that by now. Let me show you the data straight away. There we go. It's loading. Can you see that? It's loading. That's how life we are. Import prices up 6%. That's a little bit better. That's going to be a little deflationary. That's good. Retail sales X autos. It's stronger than expected. Interesting. Let me just hit the refresh button here. See if we... Crikey. Now we get the whole world. The whole wide world. And it's still loading. Uh, retail sales month on month. The overall, the overall figure. But uh, month on month... X autos is 0.1% up, which is roughly what we were expecting. We we're kind of expecting it to be flat. So it's a little bit better than expected, but not a lot. But really, the headline number is the one we're waiting for. Um, British Prime Minister speaking um, fired her um, chancellor. You know, one, one letter's firing another. A retail sales flat, 0%. Other oh, market's going to like that. Why is the market going to like that? Because it means there is softening in the consumer's expenditure here at long last. Of course, not good for retail stocks. You know, your Targets, your Macy's, your Nikes, and so on. But everybody else, uh, rejoice. Uh, that's kind of what's happening here. So that's good news. Um, brilliant. Uh, but before we do and uh, dig a little bit deeper into that, let me walk you through... Where did my whiteboard go? Let me walk you through what actually happened yesterday, because I think it's important we draw lessons from this and we've got a bit, bit deeper understanding from what the heck actually happened here. Because we had a 7% swing intraday in the S&P. That's pretty much near unprecedented and, and it's, it's really worth uh, diving into if you are a, a longish term investor. Let me just move some books here. <laughs> uh, righty hope. So what happened? Well, one thing is put volumes are super high. What does that mean? That's people buying insurance. People buy insurance because they think the market's going to tank. Uh, so when you are kind of up here, uh, everybody is basically buying insurance. It's been going up and up and up and up. And you can see that, right? For absolute ages, people are buying more and more, more pr pr protection. Why? Well, I do teach it in my, my options coaching. That might have something to do with it. Just kidding. But it's basically people worried about downside, right? So... um. Another reason is simply when you are hedged and the market does drop, suddenly those hedges are worth a lot of money. So what do you do? Well, uh, here we go. This is why they did it because of list trust and so on. Um, uh, 10 billion puts. So there's stocks last week, a record for that group. So basically when those trades get unwound, you get a positive impetus. So that's what we are saying with the $3,600 3, SPX level uh, support from puts that bounces us up. Um, and that's also what I've got here. When stocks, stocks tumbled this morning, yesterday morning, all those bearish hedges were suddenly in the money. That's option speak for making money, leading to a massive delta burn. Don't worry about that unless you're one of my options traders. Um, so they rushed to monetize. So they are um, forcing delta hedge dealers to buy futures aggressively, sparking that massive move upwards. And that's kind of what we thought might happen, uh, except if we'd fallen really, really lower, then it might have turned out the other way. So indeed, while equity futures sold off, the CBO volatility index, the VIX, um, actually fell, a sign of profit taking by hedged traders. And it's a good place to be a hedged trader. That's why I teach it to you guys. Um, and we get that lovely delta squeeze that we talk about sometimes in coaching. So that's kind of a lot of this. A lot of this is actually options. Now, you might always be thinking I'm just talking about options because um, that's what I, what I trade. But no, actually, it underpins the market. And what we saw yesterday here is actually a drop in the VIX, right? And that's because... Exactly, as we said, about profit-taking by hedged traders. Now, the other part of the story is that the S&P 500's 200-week moving average line, yep, 200-week moving average line, not, not days, uh, we breached that. And that's kind of our support line. That was our support in 2008. Yeah, during COVID, we broke through, but it's pretty rare. So that also just fires up some of the money on the sidelines. So we're like, okay, we've hit a really important uh, point here. We are going to buy at this point. Stocks are cheap. And secondly, if you look at, let me just get a brighter pen, the difference between the peak and the COVID low. 
halfway point, the 50% point. So that's peak up there. And then this is the COVID low. The halfway line is exactly here. And that's precisely the point that we hit yesterday with people going, look, we've fallen 50% in this market. Typically, that's again one of those algo type um, you know, points to jump in. So that's what we're seeing. But is there worse to come? I fear so, to be honest with you. And I'm not a, a, a bear market guy. I'm not like, oh my God, the world's going to end. I, I buy stocks every week, uh, pretty much come, come what may. But our PE ratio for all stocks is sitting here at about 17.2 or 17.4, something in that range. That's PE. And that is higher than pretty much any bear market we've had in recent history. If you look at um, 2008, it was down here. We were at like 12. Uh, 2012, we were about 12 and a half. Um, the uh, 2019 one, we were at about 15. You know, we, we are typically lower than this. Let me just put a straight line into this. And you can see very, very rare is this level, the actual bear market. So... You could argue about that, that, you know, maybe companies become more efficient, there's more money in the market and more retail and blah, blah, blah. But if fundamentally, that is something to look at, that this might not be quite there yet, because fundamentals macro hasn't really changed. So there is that. If you have questions on that, guys, put it in the chat. Um, I'm super happy to answer them. That's why we, we're doing here. You think a green jacket would help? Robert says, 250 watching, only 28 likes. Tough crowd. Well, I did mention Delta Squeeze, and I think, did I mention Gamma? I mentioned a few things that normally makes people run for the hill, Robert, but I appreciate that. Um, the question is, where do we go from here? That's exactly what we're looking at here. Where do we go from here? So retail data is, is the next bit of data that we've got here. Uh, plus a new British prime, not prime minister. Well, that's coming soon, I, I would say. At the moment, uh, there are, I don't really get British politics as a such thing. Uh, I think often they nominate the least competent person for the job because the more competent people can't agree on who to, to support. Uh, but anyway, that's a side story. So this is retail sales data today. Um, this is today. This is last. And this is forecast basically these two consensus and forecast so retail sales at 0.0 percent is good news yes it is good news for the market except of course for retail stocks that's positive um we expect retail stocks to get hammered anyway with all the overstock problems that they have um, retail sales x autos month on month are 0.1 percent now last month it was down so it's on the, on the higher end of things what does that mean well People are still shopping, but they're just not buying cars, right? Um, so the, the the drop in cars, which makes sense because you stop buying big stuff when you are starting to get a little bit worried about, a little worried about the future. X gas and autos, 0.3% here. That's half of last month, although it's still a little bit stronger than expected. So this is sort of like, you know, not amazing news. Um, so it's not the kind of clear cut data that shouts to the Fed, well done, you've done it. Please go on winter holiday, skiing season starts soon. It doesn't quite say that to them yet. So they, they are going to hit us harder with interest rate hikes. And if you look at the uh, expectations of the market in terms of interest rate hikes, there are Fed futures you can look up that tell you not some sort of random poll, but, but what everybody's expecting. 99.4% of the market is expecting a 75 basis point hike. The Fed hasn't got a choice. They have to do it or do more, but no one's expecting that either. So literally 99% of the market a month ago, a month ago, it was 53% of the market was expecting that. So you can see how much more hawkish we've turned because the economic data comes in the way it does. And um, that'll take us to 3.75. And then 66% of the market is again expecting another one of these for December. Um, and then for that'll bring us to 4.5% interest rates. Yup. And then in January, sorry, in February rather, we're actually expecting another rate hike, but a modest one. 
Like that's kind of where we are now. We are not like, oh my God, in December, everything is going to turn, the market's going to rally. No, we're still raising rates in February to 4.75. In March, we're kind of, the market sort of thinks we might stay flat, but we might, we will also stay at the same levels pretty much through most of the year. That's kind of the, the shocking thing, really. Like by November, the market's only pricing in a quarter percentage point rate cut. So they're thinking, well, next November, the economy will be so terrible, they'll be cutting rates, but only by a quarter percentage point because inflation will stay elevated that long. What does that mean? It means you've got a really, really nice long time period to buy some great stocks. Um, I'm not saying that European stocks are the greatest, but I made a benchmark for you of 600, the top 600 French stocks, literally all of them uh, are, are, are on there. Uh, and you see a return on capital employed, return on invested capital, net income margins, the PE ratios, earnings per share scores, interest coverage, all that kind of key stuff. It's completely free. All you're going to do is, where is it? Where is it? There it is. Eurostocks up at the top there. phoenixrents.org slash euro 600 is how you get your hands on that. Here it is bigger. phoenixrents.org slash euro 600. It's a beautiful free benchmark. Winston type for ages with those big dirty paws. Let me see if I missed any key questions here. <laughs> Some of our Germans commenting. You bought a car last month. Well, you 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 were ruining the data. Let me see if any key UK politics based on the old system. Favorite land gentry. Oh, that might be true. You locked in, Nicole. You're very kind. Only to smash the like button. I truly appreciate that. Um, Maria, okay, no, no real questions there. That's okay, but you can ask questions. That's what we're here for. So if you look at the, the market reaction to this extended hours, we've got some, well, Netflix up, JP Morgan up, SoFi up a bit. Um, moderate increase. Nike actually rebounding a little bit here, 0.4%. Um, Tesla up a touch, quarter of a percentage point. QQQ at 0.1% up, sort of going, which way do I go? I'm not quite sure. Um, and then down is Beyond Meat, Kroger, um, you see the news on that major merger, VIX is down a touch, uh, as is Adobe, Goldman's, Palantir, 0.6% down, um, Apple, Microsoft down, 0.15%, no, not really moving either way, so the market's kind of like, we're kind of undecided this morning, we're not quite sure what to do, yesterday was so crazy, um, I need to watch Felix's video to understand what the hell happened there. Uh, Mike, I can't say that I've looked at Canada's figures. What are they? Let me know. Um, Nike is down. Are you saying my, my watch list is, 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 is having one of its uh, morning fits again? I'll have to change suppliers if that's the case. Trading view has usually been very reliable. Okay, let's have a look. Did this two days ago, right? That it was going a bit bananas. No, it's up. It's 0.3% up pre-market. So that's about 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 right. It's a bit of a time lag on one or the other, I think. So it, it looks okay, unless you 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 disagree violently. Um, I, I'm not sharing the screen. Okay, I apologize. Uh, but yeah, here here we go. So you can see what's up today: Mullen, Chinese education stocks, uh, Netflix, Coinbase, J.P. Morgan, all up more than a percentage point. Um, and then we've got some moderate increases sort of across the bank, city groups, NEO up half a point, percentage point that is, Nike up 0 0.4, Polestar up 0 0.4, um, Tesla up 0 0.35. So this is just sort of modest, more early morning dip buying. That's the way I would look at that. Uh, Mike is saying Canada Canadian numbers wholesale sales are stronger than expected, but manufacturing is falling. Interesting. So it's probably an, an, an indication of overstock. Um, is that wholesale sales in in dollar value? Probably right. So it's probably um, a bit of discounting going on there and a bit of um, over uh, overstock. Have you seen X-Bank's flying car? Not in person, but I've seen the ideas of it and the videos of it and so on. It's been going on for a while. Um, interesting idea. I don't know if that's it'll ever get regulatory approval. I suppose that's really a, the key hurdle here. If we look at um, QQQ for a moment, let's have a look at the, the early morning here. 
And uh, you can see what's going on there, can't you? So this is when the, when the early morning kicked off. We fell off first, and now we're kind of recovering here because yeah, retail data is a little bit weaker than expected, I think, for some, for some, and therefore um, that's actually kind of a positive. I know it's kind of weird the way the market is sort of backward, but yeah, so we're seeing kind of a fairly stable uh, QQQ here up 0.3% at the moment pre-market, um, bit of profit taking yesterday post-market, and then we are, we, are, we are kind of starting to see a little bit of that green again here this morning. morning. Um, yep, the English chancellor has indeed been sacked. Um, I'm not surprised, to be honest with you. I think I think the prime minister is next, quite frankly. Do you think people will go crazy for the Netflix? I think it's a smart idea. I think it's taking a leaf, in a sense, out of the Disney model as well. Well, they did it the other way, well, other way around, right? But um, they actually raised their prices on the basis of the ads, which I think was even smarter. It's sort of like, well, do you want your child to watch endless adverts? If not, pay a little bit more. Otherwise, you know, you get this. So that's kind of what they've done. But um, I think a lot of people will. I think a lot of people have a strong desire to waste their life away and fill their mind with endless, mindless drivel. So they will watch Netflix. And I think it will be quite profitable for them. What is Nike going to do with all those trainers? Run. <laughs> They've got $9 billion worth of trainers. Uh, so, yeah, I guess uh, sell them, order less, um, maybe run some promotions, discounts, that sort of thing. That's kind of what we need to watch out for, really. It's like to what point do they have to discount to get rid of, of that? Update on Credit Suisse, Andre. I did one yesterday. So there is, there is, a, there is a tax investigation by the Department of the Treasury going on. Uh, accusing them of, uh, once again, helping people um, dodge U.S. tax. So that's just one of the many, many woes that they have to deal with. Um, so, yeah, not, not, no real, like, super update since that. I think they're just having, trying to basically offload something because they need to, because it'll free up some capital if they can offload their, their um, structured product division. Um, but market cap, super low. Deutsche Bank's in the same boat. Um, insurance essentially for their debt is at a ridiculous level. So the market's definitely worried about it. I know nobody wants to talk about it because nobody wants to cause another financial crisis. But um, given the um, derivative exposure of both of those banks, I think there's a, there's a real concern there. So really, I suspect we are all just hoping for some sort of white knight uh, to you know, come out of the Arabian desert and 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 buy a chunk for for whatever reason. I think that's really the best thing that you can hope for. There, maybe somebody wants to, uh, you know, invest in their private wealth division or something. It's got a pretty good name. I think it's got a pretty terrible reputation, but somehow it's got a good name. If those two things do go together. Um, What's on next week's economic calendar? We can have a quick look at that for sure. Um, let's have a look what's going on next week. So today we get Michigan's consumer sentiment. Why have we got the whole world on our list? We just wanted the US. Could we just have the United States? Please. Um, here we go. Monday, not a lot. Tuesday, not a lot, really. Wednesday, housing. We kind of know that's bad. So it's not a huge mover. Um, Thursday, we get jobless claims. I think that's definitely worth looking at, initial jobless claims, just pre-market. And then Friday, not a lot. So a fairly quiet week. The week after, I think similarly, actually, pretty quiet. GDP data coming out Thursday, 27th. Um, yeah, I, and jobless claims again. Um, a PCE, actually, I think this should actually be highlighted. This is actually much more important. This is the Fed's favorite inflation metric on, 20, on the 27th. Uh, that's really the one that, that they look at in jobless claims. So 27th is, is, is quite a bit of economic data to look out for. Uh, and then we're basically at the end of the month. October was always going to be a bit of a bit of a damp squip in a sense in terms of data. And then the job opening data and job quits, that's really the one that I'm watching out for because that's much more forward looking. And, and therefore, much, much more important um, because it's much more up to date. So, but if you just joined us, retail sales today are well, they are flattish um, overall, definitely flat, a little bit lower than expected. Uh, but if you look, if you take out auto sales, they are still at the high end of what we were expecting 0.1%. So, I'd say it's moderately good news. 
if you take out gas, which has obviously gone up, um, and, and, and autos, you're still getting a 0.3% increase. Now, that's less than last month, half from last month, but it's still higher than we were expecting. So it's kind of like okay data. It's sort of pointing in the right direction of the softening of, of consumer confidence, which we also get out in a couple of hours today. Uh, so that's all kind of nice, nice and good, but it's not quite like super, super directional in, in, in that sense. So I think there's potentially still some uh, bad news to be had here. If you want to watch me trade live today, come and join our programs, our coaching. Uh, I'll be trading live in a couple of hours um, and you'll see exactly what I do, why I do it. I explain what I do uh, so you can see how I apply our trading strategy, our trading protocol um, and, and how I get, you know, my 109% return so far for the year. Uh, so that's, I think it's, it's good for transparency, but I think it's it's more so for actually teaching, for kind of to see how I do it rather than just looking at strategy and theory. Um, so I do that every week for you guys. So you can you can share it. Check out Felix Vanzelok slash coaching. If you have at least a five figure, six figure, seven figure, eight figure, or nine figure portfolio, then um, join the community and, and, and give us a call. If you're not quite there yet with the um, five, six, seven, eight, nine figure portfolio, that's also brilliant because getting started is the most important part, quite frankly. Uh, head over to felixschwenzer.org slash options, take advantage of a hundred pre-recorded lectures, um, all the strategy, everything you need to know. You also get to watch me trade live, uh, including today. So check it out. Take advantage of my coupon code there, Freedom. And um, yeah, become a better investor. Get the extra income stream. Let me see. Uh, Jacqueline saying, finally, a week to do some trading um, without any real upsets. True. Although I think what we've been doing lately has been we've been, been doing quite well, right? Going out a little bit longer for, for the for the trade expiries, I think works quite quite sweetly. So uh, Stefan, it's an uh, the VIX dropping um, with the sell off. It's it's a, it's an indicator of of um, a reliable indicator yeah i would say so i would say so actually yeah uh, live trading at what time exactly i think i haven't put that out yet i think about 1 p.m eastern i think um i'll, I'll put it out in the discord after this call i'll, I'll, I'll ping you guys so you'll, you'll see it um yeah i'll, I'll, I'll put out a link uh, in, on the discord group so you'll see it what's going on with neo the last few weeks well Great product launch, I thought. I thought a really a tremendous product launch. Uh, very, very professionally done. And um, now it's back to like deliveries, right? Now it's back to actually getting those cars out. Um, they seem to have U-turned on the on the leasing only option for Europe. They seem to make the car available, has available for sale. Because I, I think some of their kind of quite hardcore fans actually just want to buy it. They're just like, I just want to own this car. And that's just the mindset. And that's fair enough. So I think they're making that available across Europe, which is probably a smart reaction. Mm. Neo finally moving up today, is it? Okay, let's have a quick look here. Um, Neo, it was a little, up a little just when we were looking. A 0.7%. So the, the green is continuing here this morning, which is nice to see. Um, after, I'll, I'll run through again what happened yesterday. Yeah, 0.7% up now on the QQQ. So we're really seeing some movement here. You see that? Really, really nice movement. Um, I think firing the Chancellor of the Exchequer in the UK is probably a good move too. And that might, that might honestly have helped the markets a little bit here. Uh, but let me just, if you just joined us, I'll run quick through quickly what actually uh, happened here today. Uh, so one is that you have to realize the market it has an incredible amount of puts uh, out, which essentially means people buy insurance for against the market dropping. You can do that too, by the way. It's not rocket science. It's not particularly difficult. Go out about three months by 0 0.05 delta. Uh, put options. Um, if you want to know more about that, like, you know, uh, get in touch with me. Uh, so all of those puts, um, a lot of them are 3,600. So if the market drops below 3,600, those puts suddenly become valuable. They, there's a lot of money in them. And then what happens is, um, well, they're trying, they're basically selling those puts. There's this huge rush to monetize them. And so all the hedge dealers are now buying futures and they basically then spark this massive reaction in the market. So um, we could also see that yesterday because the VIX was falling. 
And that's basically profit taking by hedge traders. And you kind of get this lovely delta squeeze uh, going on there, which is which is good. And you let me show you the chart of VIX here. VIX coming down quite a bit yesterday, which is exactly what you want to be seeing. Uh, we also had a lot of support there, that 200 day weekly moving average line. We, that's been holding basically since 2008, with the exception of the COVID crash. So there are a lot of people watching that thinking, well, if we drop below that, I'm just going to buy it, right? Or it's going to trigger some sort of automated trading mechanism. It's also the 50% line that we got here yesterday. That's the halfway mark below between the absolute peak of the market this year and the COVID trough. Uh, so actually not this year. The peak was, um, was in 2021, so wasn't it? Um, or was it? Well, anyway, the, it, between peak and COVID trough, the halfway mark was exactly where we turned around yesterday. And that's that's a quite a useful indicator if you're looking at a real real bearish rally here but 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 i'm afraid to say that pe multiples for this market are not super cheap they're at 17 point something which is higher i've drawn that red line here than pretty much every other bear market when it turned around right it, it just typically we go a bit lower typically there is a bit more pain to be had uh, today's data on retail sales um, is actually somewhat positive maybe not for retailers but uh, for the rest of the market because it shows there's a little bit of a softening going on here in um well consumer confidence consumer sentiment consumer spending which is which is useful so uh, anthony you see a lot of pole stars where you live brilliant you're very lucky where do you live hit the like button says michael i appreciate that I wish I had enough money to sell puts on Google at this price. So selling puts is essentially wishing to buy a stock below its current price. Uh, buying puts is essentially buying insurance. So they're two very, very different things. Um, and Andrea, I think I think you're right on, on all Chinese equities. Um, I, I think some point in December, we, we're going to get some details of those audits. And that might be a catalyst one way or another. Um, Montreal. Oh, interesting. You see a lot of a lot of um, poll stars up there. Okay, cool. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. I, I think he did a good job. I think on the presentation. Um, I think just not everybody knows about the stock. I think that's a little bit of a challenge here. I think if you look at the valuation, ten billion market cap or so, it's. I think it's quite an attractive proposition, but that's just me, uh, and I, I, I am biased because I, <laughs> I own quite a bit of it. Uh, so um, always bear in mind that's just somebody's opinion. It's not financial advice. Um, Nikon likes, likes to sell puts over buying them. Yeah, it's a good strategy, but you have to have the capital to buy the underlying, right? Otherwise, it's it's really a fairly risky move, which I, I wouldn't um, recommend otherwise. Uh, the market is expecting 4.5% interest rates by the end of the year. And for those interest rates to remain in place until November next year. And actually, the market is expecting another interest rate hike in February. So that's really a, a bit of a shift here. And that's why we've seen the market come down quite a bit. But um, of course, OK, cool. I, I'm glad. I'm glad you, are, uh, you get that. So any questions, put them in the chat. Otherwise, you know, hit the like or the dislike button. Otherwise, you know, butt out. <laughs> um, yeah, we have a very nice uh, juicy rally here this morning on, on the QQQ, 1.2% uh, up so far. If you look at the S&P, um, SPY, also 1.2% up, basically. Uh, so the, the rally continues. If it goes above 3,800 and a bit, then you really get some fireworks. But I still think there'll be temporary fireworks. So I'd be a little cautious not to get too burned on the, on the rally up um, with, with both with trades and with buying. Um, that's, of course, just my, my perspective here, because I, I still think fundamentally the macro is, is going to tank us some more, but at least before we properly recover. So, yeah, there we are. Um, nice green rally here this morning. It'll help my, my sole options trade at the moment, which I can take some profits on after the market opens, probably. And then we'll be doing a live trading session today at, I think, 1 p.m. Eastern time to join me for that. Book a call with us, Felix Ranzalog slash coaching. Join the coaching community uh, what do we do? Well, I teach you my trading protocol, my strategy for making money. And so far this year, I'm up 109%. I've done every single one of those trades, either on a live stream or I pinged them to you in real time in the community. So you can have complete transparency and see exactly what I do. And, and especially, of course, on the live trading videos, you can see really like what I do and why I do it. And I think that's very, very useful. But I give you the whole 
shebang of 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 the how the market works, but really also what what strategies work for retail investors like you and me with you know somewhat moderate portfolios by the comparison to the, the big boys, the, the JB Morgans and so on. So if you've got five, six, seven, eight, nine figures, then this is the program for you. Check out Felix Schwanzerbox slash coaching book a call with us. If you're not quite there yet with a five figure portfolio, that's also brilliant. I love the fact that you are here, the fact that you wish to learn more, the fact that you are getting started and let's help you get started. One of the key things really is to building a, a portfolio is just having more cash flow available, right? Having more income. Um, that's what we can do with options. Check out Felix Schwanzerlock slash options. It's a hundred plus lectures, pre-recorded program. You get to watch me trade live, hold strategy. It's all there. It's all included. Um, daily live chat support and everything else as well. So check it out and write down that coupon code freedom and jump on that. Um, Hunt is the Jeremy Hunt is the new chancellor. Um, if you're not familiar with British politics, he was a big supporter of the last chancellor who we thought might be might make a decent prime minister. But instead, we got some, um, what I think the sun, was it the sun, termed her a lettuce, a wet lettuce uh, today. Uh, so I suspect um, the prime minister is also going to be on the one, one, one for, for swapping out. What's left that's not priced in by the market, says Andrea. Yeah, you're right on that. I think a lot of this is priced in. A lot of market money is sitting on the sidelines. But typically, the market looks for some sort of catalyst, right? And at the moment, what's the catalyst? Like, you know, better than expected earnings? Possible. I don't think very likely, but possible. You know, but you need you need something. At the moment, we haven't really got that something. Uh, the best broker to trade options with in the UK, um, you want to set up front of sec an interactive broker's account. I'll put it in the chat here. Interactive. Well, actually, I'll, I'll put it on the screen. It's probably easier for you to see. In Europe, you really only have two brokers available, so it's pretty easy. Uh, interactive brokers or paper trading, which is simulated trading. And once you get going live, uh, I would probably use Tastyworks for real trading. Uh, but Tastyworks doesn't offer paper trading, so it's tough to learn on. Well, you can't really learn on it at all. Interactive Brokers has paper trading. It's basically free. So I take advantage of that and learn it. And in, 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 inside the program, Sonny Sec, we also teach you how to use the platform because it's a little bit convoluted at first. <laughs> My sister also got her eyebrows done by broad tip marker. Okay. Um, Tasty trade, indeed. Um, Saxo is decent, but very expensive. Very expensive. Uh, Stefan, you like the Tastyworks platform? Yeah, I think it's pretty decent. It's got pretty nice charts. It's, 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 it's relatively simple to use compared to Interactive Brokers, for sure. But you still have to kind of go through Interactive Brokers. Now, you can, if you, if you want to be cheeky about it, you could set up a Think or Swim account. Uh, pretend you're in, in, in based in North America. Um, just don't do all the verification. You don't need to do that. And you'd still get a free think or swim account that probably close you down after three months, but no real harm done. Um, it's just a free paper trading account. So um, there we go. Um, Michael, I like your sense of humor. <laughs> ah. um, Ukraine resolving might be a catalyst. Of course, it would be a tremendous catalyst. It would It would pull Europe out of a recession. It would re significantly reduce oil prices, which is the number one fuel Germany burns, for example. Uh, but look at the Chechnya war, for example. How long did that go on for, right? Look, at the, the, the Russians don't really have a reputation under Putin to um, kind of come to the table and be rational and reasonable about it. So I think the threshold for pain there is pretty, pretty high. So I, I, I'm not holding my breath for that. I hope for it, but I'm not, um, you know. Uh, Manta, so you don't know what fee you get can differ. Yeah, so I, I'd be, use, it, use it for learning interactive brokers once you go real for trading. I, I probably wouldn't. Tastyworks is probably a better, better bet, uh, at least in Europe. <laughs> uh, I'm glad my 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 vocab is is entertaining. Uh, 
Righty hope. So there is um yeah, bit of bit of a color to what was going on here yesterday. One interesting thing actually also is that well, I thought it was interesting that uh, call options for uh, for the S&P went from something like 30 cents to $77 I read somewhere yesterday. So it just goes to show like how nobody wanted call options because nobody thought the market was going to go up and suddenly they're worth a ton of money because everybody thinks the market's going to go up. So you can look for those opportunities and you can actually sell that call option. You can collect a ton of premium and, and still up, set, up, set up a safe trade, right? Um, Quarting uh, getting fired probably helps a little bit. Yes, there has been quite a lot of uh, correlation between the UK's government idiotic moves and uh, and the S and P. Here's the S and P. If we let me show it to you, if you go on a on a day chart and then compare it with, uh, I mean, can we get some gilts on here? No, UK. Or Ukraine. How do I pull up UK bonds on here? Really? Not gilts? Maybe in futures? So ETFs. See, Vanguard's taken over the world. Okay, something like that might do the trick. Um, yeah, you can see there's a pretty strong correlation there, right? That was the point I was trying to make, a very strong correlation. So yeah, when, when, when um, the UK market, go on, a, on, a, like on an hourly chart here, moves significantly, um, the UK bonds being the orange line and the colorful line being, being the S&P, you can see there is some significant reaction here, right? So when, when the gilts move up, so that's the stock market and so on, because it is... You know, despite what some people might think, a significant economy of some importance, the UK, especially for the financial industry. Um, the UK's central bank deadline being today, yeah, that was a pretty idiotic move, I thought. I was almost wondering whether he, they, the central bank was just like, we're going to force the government to turn this, this around because the U UK government forced the central bank to intervene with their idiotic tax policy. So I always think whether this is the, the power struggle between central bank and government and um, the central banks won right because the chancellor is gone so there we go um yeah the uk is a well it's a what is it, sixth seventh largest economy in the world but it's a massive massive financial market right it's, it's europe's financial market despite what you know uh, the french will tell you we need rishi back I, I i was so surprised he didn't get the job but then you know Remember with um, with the last one, um, Theresa May, like, why did she get the job? Because the front runners, runners didn't want to support each other. So then they pick the out the outsider, right? That's kind of what they did here again, I think. So, yeah, it's a bit of an odd system uh, within the Conservative Party. Eat out to help out. Oh, that's quite funny. Uh, righty -ho. Any any other questions? Put them in the chat. Um, otherwise, um, well, market's looking quite nice and juicy and green today. I look forward to trading in a couple of hours. I'll do that live. Anybody who wants to join, you know what to do. Book a call with us at phoenixrentsalog slash coaching. If you have a five-figure portfolio or more, six, seven, eight, nine, quite frankly, we'll get you there. We've got six, seven, eight, nine figure students in the community. And um, if you're not quite there yet, if you're getting started, Check out Felix Friends log slash options. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing uh, quite a lot of you on the live trading chat later today and the coaching guys on the call tomorrow morning. And I wish you a beautiful Friday.